Good morning and welcome to NorCal PTAC's webinar, Navigating the System for Award Management, otherwise known as SAM. My name is James Forrest. I am the program coordinator. Let's go ahead and go one slide back. I'm the program coordinator for NorCal PTAC. Uh, and today our main presentation will be delivered by Nancy Pigeon, who is uh, one of our procurement specialists. NorCal PTAC stands for Northern California Procurement Technical Assistance Center. That's a bit of a mouthful. So we go by Northern NorCal PTAC. It's a lot shorter. Um, we are funded by the Defense Logistics Agency, as well as other state and local sources. And we are hosted by the Humboldt State University Sponsored Programs Foundation. So if you see that green map on the right, there's a red star up at the top near that little bay. That is Humboldt Bay. That red star is where I'm standing. and. Um, we, our service area covers all of the counties in green you see on the map there. So uh, the whole Bay Area, if you're there, uh, if you're anywhere up the coast or in Siskiyou, Trinity and Shasta, you're in our service area. That means you're eligible to apply for client services. Um, as you can tell today, many of you are not in our service area and that is totally fine. Um, you, you can join our webinars. You can uh, in, enjoy our services uh, that are publicly offered and free to everyone from anywhere. So that doesn't matter. Um, but if you'd like our client services, which means one-on-one -on -one counseling and custom bid matching, you do have to have a business that ha that is located in our service area. So um, oh, another note today, because we are talking about SAM, System for Award Management, um, there may be a lot of nonprofits on, on the call today. Uh, I saw one or two nonprofits listed in the chat. That's awesome. Well, you can certainly enjoy this webinar and get something out of it for signing up for SAM. Um, unfortunately, due to funder restrictions, we can't help nonprofits directly. So we can't take you on as a client. So if you are a nonprofit, um, there are other resources out there for you, but we are specifically for not uh, for, for profit businesses that are located in our service area here. And we're looking for government contracting assistance, not grant assistance. Um, so let me just talk a little bit about our services. We have one on one counseling. So we have a team of procurement specialists. Uh, uh, so for instance, Nancy is one of our procurement specialists and we have seven others. They together, all, all eight of them have like 241 years of experience in the government marketplace. So uh, if you'd like to be connected with them, you can apply for our services. They can help you with just about any topic related to government contracting. So you need certifications, uh, preparing a capability statement, doing marketplace research, um, entering contract vehicles, like GSA, 8A, things like that. Um, we also have a custom bid matching platform that we can offer to our clients who are signed up. And that is a service that we pay for that we offer you for, for free. You work with your procurement specialist, figure out the codes that represent what your business sells, and then you put them in the database. And then every morning you wake up and you have an email in your inbox with all, all of the appropriate fitting bid requests that are posted in the marketplace um, that are in our database. So that's pretty cool. Uh, helps you stay on top of those opportunities. And then of course, as you all know, by you being here today and hearing the words I'm saying, we offer resources and trainings. Right now, these are 100% remote and they're free as always and available for anyone to join from anywhere, regardless of business status, et cetera. So if you are a for-profit business located in our service area looking for government contracting, uh, we would love for you to sign up on our website, norcalptech.org, and uh, you click on that red apply now button and you get started. If you are not in our service area, don't worry. There are 94 PTACs across the country. We are just one of a national network of nonprofit centers. So the chances are that your county is covered by another PTAC. You can find that website here. Um, by the way, all of these links will be clickable later today uh, when you receive the slides as well as the video recording. Um, so you'll be able to click on that. You can also just type in, if I'm in Kern County, Kern County PTAC, and it'll come up with the right, with the right information. Uh, just a quick shout out to the SBDC in North, Northern California. That is the Small Business Development Center. They are a kind of a sister program. Uh, they're a nonprofit network made up of 18 centers, and they're dedicated to helping small businesses with every aspect of business creation, growth, management, and operation. So while NorCal PTAC, we, we were really specialists about the procurement side of things, um, NorCal SBDC can help in general. So if your business is not quite set up yet, if you don't have a business plan, um, if you're kind of in the pre-venture phase and you're getting things rolling, you're getting your, you're getting your registrations, um, 
don't come to us just yet. I would suggest going to the NorCal SBDC first. And once you've got a few quarters of sales and a positive cash flow, um, a bit of a history of performance, come to us and, and that will that will be once you're ready to start getting into government contracting. So like us, you can find your local SBDC using that link there or just type it into Google. There's tons of SBDCs across the country as well. So this is uh, one of the larger networks located in Northern California, but there are others as well. And both us and the SBDC, we have COVID-19 resources available to all um, who have been affected by the pandemic or, or who are looking to uh, transition their business in a way to assist with the pandemic response. So I believe with that, uh, I just wanna give a couple housekeeping notes here. We are in the Zoom webinar version of, uh, of Zoom. And so what that means is that you all start off muted and with your videos off. And among other things, we have a chat, but we also have a Q&A feature now. And the Q&A feature is very cool. And this is what we wanna use for content questions. So there will be a question and answer section at the end of the webinar. If you have questions during the webinar, post them to the Q&A, not the chat. You put them into the Q&A, then we can um, read those aloud to Nancy and all track them together um, at the end of the webinar. If you have a technical issue or if you want to have a shout out or something like that, you can put that in the chat. So that's perfectly fine. But if you want a question read aloud, uh, put that in the Q&A. And just one more reminder, because I always get multiple questions. I, I'm sure we'll get another one today. Uh, we are recording this and the video as well as the slides will be posted to our website. And that link will be emailed out to everyone later today with the survey, uh, survey request as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, thank you for hearing my spiel. And if you've joined a webinar before, sorry, it takes a while, but um, I present to you Nancy Pigeon, who is uh, one of NorCal PTAC's procurement specialists. And we're very thankful for Nancy for stepping in the last minute and covering for Mary Jo as well, who was out sick. Thank you. Sorry, I had to wrestle the mouse away from you. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you got it now. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Let me get set up here. I had to wait for James to... Uh, Give me control. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about myself so uh, you'll know my experience and, and where I'm coming from today. Um, I'm a, a retired Air Force Chief Master Sergeant. Uh, I spent 22 years in service. Um, I spent my first 10 years in the munitions career field. That's kind of a fun fact. Uh, building bombs and ammunition for the A-10 Warthog, one of the greatest planes ever. And uh, when I finally decided to cross train into contracting, um, I did about 12 years uh, learning contracting, uh, DOD contracting, um, and also as my rank increased, I was leading airmen uh, through all the ins and outs of the Air Force. Um, and then when I retired, I transitioned to the Federal Acquisition Workforce. Um, I spent about two years working as an Air Force civilian um, then I transferred to the Veterans Affairs out uh, in Sacramento, California, where I did that for about four years. Um, and then my last stint with the federal government was with the Bureau of Reclamation, also in Sacramento, um, where I was a contracting officer. And then I finished out my time there as um, the small business specialist, helping small businesses uh, or finding small businesses to do business with for the Bureau. Um, and so that led to my love of helping small businesses. So uh, when this opportunity uh, came available, um, I jumped all over it. So very happy here at NorCal PTAC, very happy helping small businesses uh, get started in government contracting. Um, I love doing the one-on-one -on -one counseling and, you know, and each client is different. So helping them kind of develop their plan um, for moving forward in government contracting. So that's a little about me. And I currently live in Nevada. I don't live in California. Um, all of us counselors are kind of remote and live all over the country. So that's where I'm coming to you from. Lovely Fallon, Nevada, about an hour from Reno. Uh, this slide is just saying uh, uh, everything that I've compiled in here um, is current as of last night. <laughs> um, I reviewed the slides last night since I had to jump in. Um, so um, I did make a few changes. And so everything in here is as current as far as I'm concerned as of last night. 
anything changes in the future, um, just be aware that it may change because you know things change constantly in the government. So we're here today to kind of do a high level um, overview of the systems for award management. Um, if you haven't done anything with the government, uh, the federal government, um, this is the entryway for your business. Uh, everyone who wants to do business with the US government must register in SAM. That'll be the first thing they ask you if you, um, if you talk to any government officials is if you're uh, registered in SAM. Um, so SAM is also the place where they're gonna combine a lot of um, other um, systems. So pretty soon SAM will be really big and you'll be able to find a lot of things in there. They're trying to consolidate everything into to just one place for everyone to go to. But for registering your business, um, this is where you'll come and it is free. Um, you shouldn't have to pay for anything um, with the government. So you'll come in here to register your business. Um, you can also update or renew your entity, which you have to do an annual renewal every year. Um, you can also check the status. Once you've um, submitted your registration, you can come in and check the status of it. We'll go over that a little bit later. Um, another good thing, um, and sometimes I do this with my clients, is uh, maybe you don't know what your NAICS codes are, your North, your North American industry codes um, that you have to put in here. Um, and sometimes they'll know who their competitors are, and we will go and look them up in SAM um, to see what their NAICS codes are and, and how they've set up their organization. So, it's a little bit of market research you can throw in there too. Um, so um, it does serve a, a really good purpose in, in, in various ways. Okay, so what you need to have, um, well, getting ready to register stamps, uh, you have to follow the process. So you'll have to have an established business. Um, you can have your structure through, you know, the state, you know, develop an LLC, um, a corporation or, you know, subcorp. Um, you can also be a sole, sole proprietor, um, but you'll need to have your business structure established. Um, you'll also need to request your tax ID number or your employee ID number from the IRS. Um, and you can do that for free. Um, I have the link for it in the resources. Um, if, you're social, um, if you're a sole proprietor, you can use your social security number, but recommend, um, you know, getting a, a tax ID number uh, to kind of shield your social security number um, from the public. Um, you're gonna need to obtain your DUNS number um, and that's the uh, Dun and Bradstreet number. Um, it's just a, another check and balance between the government um, of um, establishing that you are a business. Um, DUNS will go out and check your um, state registration, your LLC and your corporation information and and pull that in. Um, the DUNS number, there is a, um, you can get that for free also. Um, I have a link for it um, in the later slides. Um, but also, um, if you join PTAC and become our client, we can just call and get it for you. Sometimes it's easier for PTAC to call and get you your number. Um, if you go through the application, sometimes they want, want you to send them documents and other things. Um, if you come through PTAC, we can just call and get it for you. So. Another advantage of being um, a, a PTAC client. Um, you'll need to set up your business bank account. You'll need a, a bank account and a routing number uh, when you're registering in SAM. Um, and then the process is after you have those things, you can register in SAM, which again is free. Um, I do recommend um, that you have, that you, if you do nothing else <laughs> um, in becoming a PTAC client, um, you should join if you're going to register in SAM. Um, it takes about an hour when I do it with a client, so um, you can imagine what it will be like on your own um, to do the registration. Um, you may hear people say, do you have a CAGE code? Um, that's the Commercial and Government Entity Code. Um, once you go through this whole process and you get verified in SAM, um, a CAGE code will be assigned to you. Um, so it's one way um, they check your address and all your information just to verify and validate that you're an actual business at the location that you stated. Okay, getting ready to register in SAM. Um, some of the keys to the success is 
uh, when you do the registration, your your business name and your address must exact exactly match what is in your DUNS registration. So I recommend um, if you're our client, we'll send you um, an email with all of your information on it. I recommend that you print that out and have that ready um, when you go in to do your SAM registration, because like I said, <laughs> the name must match exactly and your address must match exactly or you'll get an error. Um, so that's one of the important things to remember. Um, with some of my clients, um, I have a lot of clients that have Apple and um, we've tried to use Safari and um, it'll just go so far and then it'll quit working. So um, I recommend a lot of my Apple folks have Chrome. Um, so we jump on Chrome and it, it's no problem. Um, and then another um, issue is for typing enter entries, a lot of them you'll have the pop-up with the fill-ins with your address and phone numbers and things like that. Um, I recommend you don't do that. Um, because sometimes when you use a fill-in, it'll change a block that's further up and you don't catch it. Um, so it can lead to some error. So I recommend that you type in, I know it's a pain, but <laughs> um, I recommend that you type in the fill-ins for the address and the phone numbers and, and things like that. Um, and again, the physical address must match the DUNS registration. I know I mentioned it on the last slide. Um, your physical address should be um, the address where the work is performed. Um, there is a place to put a mailing address if you have a separate mailing address from where the work is done, um, but your physical address should be where the work is performed. And you can use a home address if you have a home business. Um, and I recommend before, um, if you haven't already set up your business or um, before you go to Dunn's, that you do the USPS lookup and get the exact address that's in the USPS uh, uh, system, um, because that's what DUNS is going to look for. I'm not DUNS, I'm sorry, CAGE is going to look for um, when they go to verify your address. Um, you cannot use a UPS, FedEx, or other mailbox provider. Um, I know it has a street address, but that's not where your business is, um, and they won't accept it. So um, if you're going to spend, you know, you're setting up your business and you're going to get one of these boxes, um, you won't be able to use it for your SAM registration. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, you can have a rented house, uh, office, or a virtual space, um, but be prepared because um, you will get an email from uh, CAGE requesting the lease, um, and the lease has to have the exact suite number or office space um, that you're working out of. Um, sometimes in the virtual spaces, they don't give you a lease. Um, um, so we can prepare a letter. Um, I've done this with a couple of folks um, where we prepared a letter and had the, um, uh, the owner of the building will sign saying, yes, they're assigned to this desk in this office at this address. Um, and that has worked. So um, just some of the things to be prepared for um, when you're registering a SAM and going for that cage code. Um, cage code is usually the sticking point um, in SAM registration. So trying to lay out um, what you can do to avoid those. Okay, so this is kind of the system. And like I said, this was just a, um, a high view. I'm not gonna, I won't be going through every single thing um, because that would take us hours to go through. Um, so the high level version of this, um, you go to the sam.gov page, um, you'll click login. You'll click login here in the red circle. Um, it'll take you to the login.gov to register your account. And login.gov is, uh, is used at other federal sites too. Once you start getting into federal government work, there'll be other sites that you have to go to. Say you want to register, you know, a woman-owned small business, you have to go to that site. Um, and 8A, you have to go to another site. Um, all of them are starting to use login.gov um, as a common login. Um, so once you have this, make sure you know, or you remember it and you'll be using it in other sites. Um, there's a login.gov fax if you want to click on that to get a little more information about login.gov. Um, and this is just the picture of the login.gov screen. Um, you'll want to come down here and click create an account. Um, just, you know, follow it. It's, it's pretty simple instructions. You'll be able to um, figure it out. Um, establish your account. Um, 
and then either it's going to take you back to SAM or you will um, go log into SAM again. Um, it kind of goes back and forth um, depending on the day and the system, um, how it works. Um, so when you get back to the main um, SAM.gov page, you have to create a user account. Um, and this is kind of a holdover from before uh, login.gov, but you still have to do it. So uh, when you click on create a user account, um, you'll want to select individual account when you're in there. And then just follow the instructions. It's basically setting up um, email and a, um, a login ID, which you're not going to use because you use, log, use login.gov. Um, but basically, it's just a holdover from the older system, but you still have to do it. Um, when you have all that done, um, you may have to log in again, unfortunately, but um, it does go through several things where it makes you log in more than once. Um, and then you will click on register entity um, or register new entity, depending on where you're at in the system. And then when you, uh, when you when you begin starting a new entity, you're going to get this pop-up screen. Um, it gives you the information that you need, um, and which we've already gone over. You'll need uh, your DUNS number and your legal business name, and that's from your DUNS registration, and your physical address from your DUNS registration. And it even says it right here on the screen. Um, your your name, physical address from your DUN and Bradstreet records. So it has to match exactly. I, I don't want to, I want to emphasize that a lot. <laughs> um, that's usually where a lot of problems come in. Um, your tax ID number and your taxpayer name associated with your tax ID number. Um, if you go in and make an EIN or a TIN, they'll, the IRS will send you a letter or email you um, a letter um, with your number on it. Just pay attention to who the taxpayer is because um, when you get in here, you'll put in the tax ID number and a little later on, it'll say um, taxpayer name. Sometimes it's the business and sometimes it's your name. Just depends on how you are set up um, with your business. So um, that's another thing that gets rejected from the IRS is that the tax ID number doesn't match the taxpayer name. Um, so just pay attention to that. Um, you will also need your bank routing number and your bank account number. Um, to fill in and that's for electronics funds transfer. That's how you're gonna get paid by the government. Um, they no longer do checks. They won't mail out checks um, unless it's certain circumstances. Um, so just make sure that you have um, your account set up and you have your account number when you go in here. Um, you'll also need your, um, your bank customer service number in that field as well. So you'll need those, uh, all these things to get going um, and some systems where you register, they have you upload documents. SAM does not have you upload any documents. So you don't need to worry about having documents um, stashed somewhere in order to upload. Okay, so this will be the main page. Uh, once you pass that blue page with all the information, um, you're gonna go through each one of these stages. Um, there's a purpose of registration. Then you'll be putting in core data then you'll be looking through the representations and certifications and you'll be certifying to those. Um, you'll need some points of contact, at least three. Um, and then there's one step missing here, which is the small business um, profile. So uh, if you come back as being a small business, um, it, will, it will add that for you to go and do your, set up your SBA profile as a small business. Um, and then you'll submit your certification. And we're gonna go through each one of these high level um, I can give you kind of some of the information about each one of those. Some of them are pretty straightforward and some of them you have to uh, know a little bit about. So our first um, selection is purpose of registration. So for, for PTAC clients, most of you are, are, are gonna be for-profit or all of you will be for-profit businesses. Um, so you're gonna click uh, business or organization and why are you registering? So here's the difference of um, how many fields you're going to have to fill out. Uh, if you're for profit and you want to do, you want to bid on federal contracts and other procurement opportunities, um, you're going to be filling out all of this. Um, and if you're a small business, the small business profile. 
Um, if you want to want to apply for federal assistance um, and do grants and loans and other financial assistance, um, you won't be filling out all of this. It'll just be um, a fairly short um, application just so you can get um, a CAGE code because um, grants and loans and other, they require you to have a CAGE code as well. Um, so the main purpose of your registration for the second um, opportunity here is um, to get a CAGE code. So, but for PTAC clients, we will be clicking business or organization and I want to bid on federal contracts. So that one's pretty simple. <laughs> okay, and then we move into the core data. Um, and this is going to be a lot of questions about your business specifically. Um, you're going to verify your entity information and that's what came over from the DUNS. Um, additional business information can be um, your structure um, and other information like that. The IRS consent, you're going to be putting in your um, tax ID number um, or your EIN. Um, and then once you have that, um, you will be clicking that you give consent for the IRS to verify that that's your tax ID number or your EIN. Um, there is a section for CAGE or NCAGE. You're just going to say no because you don't have a CAGE code yet um, if you're a new registrant. Um, sorry about my clock. I, meant, I forgot to turn it off. <laughs> um, and then there's going to be ownership details. So who's the actual owner? Who's the point of contact? Um, information like that. Any predecessor de details, such if you took over a business from someone else, is there a predecessor? Um, and then just more general information um, and then more financial information. The fin financial information um, will be more like, um, um, sorry, trying to think. <laughs> um, it goes into more about how much money you're making and, um, and things like that. There's executive compensation. Uh, most of you won't have to worry about that because um, if you're just registering a SAM, you're not like a multi-million dollar um, company, um, unless you are a multi-million dollar year company, you decide to jump into government contracting. But um, for most um, folks that come to us, the executive compensation questions are going to be a no. <laughs> um, proceedings questions and then the SAM search authorization, this is giving, um, if you click yes on this, it's going to give anyone who wants to the ability to, to find you in SAM. Um, and that's your non, um, it won't give things like your, your tax ID information or anything like that. It's, your, it's just your public information, um, you know, your address, cage, cage code, DUNS number, those types of things. I recommend that you put yes on there. Um, just so um, another reason for registering a SAM is um, so entities can find you and it might help you with um, prime contractors and finding you to see if you're a good fit to be a subcontractor. Um, so I recommend that you put yes on that. And then there's a long review. Um, you'll just go through each section and review it. Um, and then there's an edit button that you can go back and edit if something's not right. And I did skip one of my bullets there. Um, at the very beginning, um, you'll be creating an MPIN number, which stands for Marketing Partner ID Number. Um, it's very important that you remember this, um, put it in a secure place um, because you'll be using it at other government sites. Um, if you go in and do certifications or um, just any other thing that goes with government contracting, you, you're, you're gonna need your MPIN number. So very important to keep that. A lot of people um, forget it and then it's hard to retrieve. Um, um, so I've gone through several retrieval processes and, and it's not fun. So um, please make sure you keep that uh, somewhere safe that you can find it. So assertions, so here we, um, Here's where you're going to put in your, your NAICS code, which are your Northern American industry codes. Um, so you'll have to look those up. I did provide a link at the end in the resources um, for a place where you can look up NAICS codes. Um, if you don't know about NAICS codes, um, before doing this, you'll, you'll want to look that up. And I do believe we have a webinar on NAICS codes. Um, so you may want to go look at that. 
Um, we can't get into NAICS codes here um, today, but um, you want to make sure that you um, specify the exact NAICS codes that you're working under. And don't put a million NAICS codes saying I can do it all because that just um, shows the government that you're kind of um, not focused on your, your main business. So just find your main uh, goods and service codes and put those out there. Um, if you want to grow later, that's fine. Um, I know a lot of my clients in the beginning, they just want to throw everything out there and see what sticks. But um, I always advise you to you know, stick with the, what you know best, um, stick with the products you have, and you can always grow it later. You can always add NAICS codes later. You don't have to add them all in the beginning. Um, and then size metrics, this is where you're gonna put in your um, sort of your annual revenues. Um, so the NAICS codes and your size metric, your annual revenues, that's gonna decide whether you're a small business or not. Um, so make sure that you answer those um, truthfully and um, because it, it's gonna make a difference whether you're a small business or not. Um, EDI information, um, most of you are not gonna have um, EDI access. Um, if you do, you can put it in there. Um, this is electronic data uh, information exchange. Um, and most people don't have it. Um, it's kind of an old system. Um, not too many people use it anymore. So unless you come up on an agency that wants to um, use EDI, and you want to get an account, um, I wouldn't really worry too much about EDI. Um, disaster response information, if you want to fill that out, if you have a product or a service that can be used during um, a national disaster um, or a state disaster, um, you can fill that out. Um, you, can, um, you already have what your products and services are, so you can just say, um, I'm available during um, disaster. I can respond. I can respond nationwide, I can respond statewide, or I can only respond in certain counties. Um, it allows you to you know, go down to the county level if you only wanna do you know, Humboldt County you know, for fire season or something like that. You can just specify that you only wanna do Humboldt County. And then again, there'll be a review at the end. Um, just review everything that you input. And again, there'll be an edit button there if you need it. Okay, reps and certs. So um, they're called representations and certifications, but in the government, we call them reps and, cert, reps and certs. Um, they're from the federal acquisition regulation. And what you'll be doing is filling out. Um, so in contracting, we have these, um, these standards reps and certs um, that always go in them. Um, so when Sam was developed, um, they decided since the reps and certs are so common, um, we're just gonna have um, the businesses fill them out in SAM, certify to them, and that will be good. We won't have to do them every time we do a contract or a solicitation. Um, so what you're doing is filling out uh, common reps and certs um, that will apply um, to solicitations and contracts. So, um, and then it's required that they be done each year. So I do have a little um, description of what they are. Um, so the representation is about your capabilities and your ability to perform. And the certification guarantees that the applicant meets certain standards or will comply with certain government, government acts. Um, so there are a lot of reps and certs in here that you have to answer and um, I recommend if you want to, if you're going to do this on your own, um, that you get the user guide and we do have a link to the user guide, um, in the slides, um, because it goes through each, uh, reps and certs and kind of gives you a description of what it means. Um, but I totally recommend getting a PTAC counselor. Like I said, if, if the only reason you get a PTAC counselor is to help you through SAM registration, you'll be very happy about it. Um, because we can walk you through and, ex and explain what the rep and the cert is um, before you answer it. Um, and then I have a note on there. Um, you can be subject to penalties if you misrepresent your entity um, in the representations and certifications. So highly recommend um, the user guide or a PTAC counselor um, when you're doing your SAM registration. And 
And then points of contact, you have to have at least three uh, mandatory points of contact. And again, this depends on some of the questions that you answer throughout um, your application. Um, for most folks, it's just going to be three. Um, there are certain places where you have to uh, add two more. Um, and you can also add um, optional POC, POCs. So if you have an accounts receivable, um, but you want to put an alternate in there just in case your main person's not there, you can do accounts receivable and then option accounts receivable. Um, but normally when I'm filling out with clients, there we just have these three. And a lot of times the, the client is all three of them um, until you know the company grows and you actually get a government business POC um, and an accounts receivable POC. Um, so, but there's only three mandatory ones um, to fill out normally. And then if you remember, we were going along with this, um, each section here, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong screen. <laughs> we are going along with each section here. Um, so, you know, we talked a little bit about each one of these. Um, if you are a small business, the small business certification is going to come up and it's to set up your SBA profile. Um, a lot of people skip this um, or they don't, they don't see that they need to click here um, to go do it. Um, so just be aware of that if you're doing it on your own um, to make sure you click on that and set up that profile. Um, it's really important <laughs> um, that you do this as a small business um, so you'll have the visibility. And I'm going to show you in the next screen, um, the next two screens about that. Um, so like I said, it's an important but often overlooked part of SAM registration. Um, when you click on the button, it's going to take you out to another site, the SBA profile site, and it will autofill the information that it needs from SAM. So whatever you put in already, um, it will autofill that. So if you see something wrong from the autofills in SAM, then that means you have a problem with SAM you have to go back and fix. Um, the things that you will be filling out um, are the keywords. Um, so before you even go in and do your SAM registration, make sure you have some keywords. Um, the main keywords of your business um, to add in there. And then you'll want to write a short capability statement. I'll show you on the next screen what one looks like. Um, and this is very, very important um, to get the capability statement in there. And I'll show you why on the next screen. Um, so this information is compiled in the, um, what is called the SBA Dynamic Small Business Search. Um, and this site is used by contracting officers to find small businesses, and it can be used by prime contractors looking for subs. Um, and I wanna say as a contracting officer, um, I was on this, um, I was on DSBS almost every day, and even as a small business person. Um, it is a search site, we can put in criteria, we can put in, we want this NAICS code, and we want women-owned small businesses um, in this area, um, and it will spit it out for us. And it's part of our market research. We can say, oh, I have five women-owned small businesses in this area. I can set this aside for, small, for a woman-owned small business. Um, that's how important this database is. So um, please make sure you fill it out. Um, I would reach out to these women-owned small businesses um, and prime contractors. You know, Maybe they have a construction in it, um, an area that um, they don't normally work in. They can get on DSBS, um, do a search, you know, find a small business in that area that helps with their small business goals, and it helps them um, get attuned to the area that they're going to be working in. Um, so please make sure you fill out the SBA supplemental page. Um, I am planning to do a webinar on, on this, so be on the lookout for that um, if you want more information about the SBA supplemental page. Let me show you that next page. Um, so this is why I'm saying it's important um, to put your, your capability statement in here because it shows up here. So if I do a search and I only get, you know, if I only get two responses, um, you know, this is the company I want to look at because they're telling me exactly what they do. 
Um, this other one, they didn't tell me what they did. And if I click in um, to find their additional information, it's not gonna tell me anything more. Um, so this is a very important thing to do when you're doing your SAM registration, is to go in here and put in your um, capability statement and your keywords, because sometimes we'll search on keywords as well um, if we're looking for a specific thing. Um, and like I said, if you click on um, the blue outline, um, it brings up another page and I can see your identification, your location, um, who to contact. Um, it'll also tell me your organization, um, whether you're an LLC or something like that, who owns it, and then your self-certified certifications that are within um, SAM. And right now, self-certification is uh, a small dis disadvantaged business or um, you can still vet, do veteran owned small business uh, self-certification. Um, the ones that you have to actually go get certified for are in the next section, and that would be an 8A, uh, a woman-owned small business, or a hub zone. Um, pretty soon, um, veteran-owned and uh, service-disabled veteran-owned will also be an SBA certification. Um, just FYI on that. <laughs> Um, and then it'll show your products and services, which will show your NAICs, your primary NAICs. Um, it'll show your keywords and your capability statement. Um, I didn't put on here, but you can also put a reference on there. If you have a really good reference, um, you can put that on there. Someone who's going to um, um, say that you do a good job um, in your services. Again, sorry about the clock. Um, so when you come back, um, you're going to fill out the SBA validation, and then you'll just go back into SAM when you've completed that. Um, and then the next session is to submit your cert certification, um, which is the goal. Um, so you'll go into that. Um, they'll have you know all the legal stuff for you to read before you submit. So make sure you read through that. Um, again, there will be one last um, verification of everything. So you can go through, um, make sure your bank account's right, your address is right, um, and there'll be a little edit button there that you can go in and edit if anything's wrong. Um, so just do that one last review, um, read through the legal information. Um, you know, I certify that all, everything is correct and to my knowledge, um, and then you'll be submitting. Um, so that's the last page. So then after you submit it, the first stop is gonna be to the IRS um, to validate you know, your EIN, your TIN, your social security number. Um, that usually takes two days. Um, sometimes it can be right away, it just depends. Um, and you will receive an email when you pass that, um, that pass that validation, and you will receive an email if there's an issue. And usually when you receive an email for an issue, it is usually um, that the EIN or the tax ID number doesn't mit match the taxpayer name. Um, so pay close attention to that when you're filling it out. Um, look at your IRS EIN, TIN letter, and make sure taxpayer name is what you put in the taxpayer block in SAM. Um, that is usually the main problem that I have kicked back. Um, and then after the IRS, um, it's going to go to the cage verification. Um, and this one says it takes at least two weeks. Um, you won't receive an email if it's if it goes through. You'll just get validated in SAM, and the cage code will appear in SAM. Um, you will receive an email if there are issues, and you only have three days to respond to that email. So don't put it aside and say I'll work on it later. When it comes in, you need to work on it. And usually they're going to ask um, a set of questions um, just to verify who you are. Um, verify the address and then they're going to ask if it's a leased um, if it's a lease location if it's a lease location they're going to want you to submit your lease or like i said before the letter for the um, virtual office um, so those are the main things i see returned is that you're leasing a location and they can't verify um, you as being a part of that location that's why they want the lease um, and they may also say, we see that there are five other 
um, businesses at this address, um, and you have to say that you're not associated with them. That usually comes up when there's a lot of suites, like suite A, B, C, D. Um, it'll say there are five different businesses at this location. Are you associated with any of them? Um, and so I usually help my clients through that email letter. Um, so if you are working with a PTAC counselor, um, make sure to get with them so that you answer it properly so it can just fly right through when it goes back. And then on the SAM page, it does have a check status. Um, you can always go in and click that. That way you don't have to log in um, every time. You can just go to SAM.gov, check status, put in your DUNS number, and then it'll tell you where you're at in the process. Um, this one just happened to be um, <laughs> the cage code rejected. Um, this is one of my clients that we were working on this. Um, rejected the done bad sheet changes or updates needed. Um, incorrect or incomplete physical address. Um, so she probably got the letter, um, um, but she didn't take care of it right away. Um, so now we're gonna go back and address it. Um, you have to, if you don't answer within three days, they will put you back into submit mode um, so that you can take care of the issue. And then you have to go back in and submit your application all over again. Um, so just be aware, um, if you look at it right after you submit it, it's gonna say it's currently at the IRS or it's going to the IRS and then it'll go to cage code. Um, so, um, and then once you get this active down here, the green all green checks across then you're good to go. <laughs> um, okay, I probably talked about a lot of these along the way just because um, I like to stomp my foot. Um, on the things that are important. Um, number one, your registration in SAM must match your DUNS registration. So please, um, if you have your DUNS letter or the email that we send you as a PTAC counselor, make sure that you use the correct name and the correct address that is in DUNS or you're gonna get rejected. Um, and again, we talked about the address issues. Um, you know, the remote, the virtual offices can't use the mailboxes, et cetera, and places like that. Um, it needs to be the address where you're actually doing the work. Um, and again, the tax issues, um, taxpayer versus entity. Um, you do a TIN, an EIN, make sure you look at your IRS letter and use the taxpayer name that is on the letter. Um, the email questions from CAGE, three days to answer. Um, and uh, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty, um, what do you call it? strenuous about that three-day answer. Um, if you don't answer in three days, they're just gonna um, make you submit all over again. Um, okay, spam, I know I didn't talk about this. As soon as you register in SAM and um, it doesn't even go to validation, you're gonna get a ton of emails. Um, your information is made available. Um, it's public information. And I just wanna say, um, you can avoid everything that says .com on it. Um, they send emails that look totally official, like they're coming from SAM or they're coming from DUNS um, or uh, CAGE. Um, they look totally official, but if you look at the email, it'll say .com. Just ignore those. Um, just you know, dump them, get rid of them. Um, the one you wanna look for, say .gov. <laughs> um, can't stress this enough. You know, Look at the email, if it says .gov, you know, take a look at it, see what it says. Um, there is one exception, the cage code um, letter, the one that has three days to answer, it will be a .com. So just pay attention. If it says cage and you need to answer within three days, then that's probably a valid letter. Um, but you can always ask your counselor for sure. But if it says .com and it looks official and call us today, your uh, SAM subscription needs to be reviewed or you haven't finished shutting up your profile in the SBA and it says .com, just get rid of it, it's junk. Um, here's a link to the SAM user guide that I was talking about um, that you can follow the steps through. Um, and then if you run into any problems such as technical um, or, or forget anything or can't get in, um, call the federal help desk, um, they will help you through it. And they're pretty responsive. 
see. Okay, wrapping it all up. So um, to begin with, you'll have you'll need an established business. Um, you'll need an EIN, the DUN, the banking account number. Um, you'll need to obtain the login.gov credentials. Then you'll log into STAM, establish the individual account to begin with. Then you'll register a new entity. Then you'll complete each section of the application. And again, I recommend using the guide or even better, using a PTAC counselor. Um, trust me, um, you will be happy you did. Um, set up an SBA profile, submit your application, watch for the emails from IRS or CAGE, and remember the CAGE email, you only have three days to answer. And then once your SAM registration is active, um, you're ready to submit bids, quotes, proposals um, for federal solicitations. Um, and also COs and primes can find you in dynamic small business search. So very important to do that. Um, you must recertify every year. Um, and I recommend that you um, recertify at least a month in advance just to, you know, you don't wanna wait till the last second to do it. Um, especially if you have a solicitation pending or anything like that. Um, make sure you do it a month in advance. And then if anything changes in your company, um, you decide to move the business somewhere else, um, you'll need to make changes in SAM. But again, if you change address, um, change your business name, you'll have to go through DUNS first um, to change that. And you can come to your PTAC counselor. We have a phone number that we call and we can get it done. And, you know, 15, 20 minutes, change your address um, versus you trying to do it and having to send a lease and everything else. They trust the PTAC counselors that um, what we're telling them is true. Um, so we can do that for you. Let's see what else I have. Okay, my last slide. Um, so these are some of the resources that I, um, that I told you about. Um, I did put find your local PTAC um, because I'm serious about, um, having a PTAC counselor. You know, I know I work for them. You know, I don't get paid to advertise <laughs> um, for counseling. Um, it's all free to you. It's not gonna cost you anything. Um, we can help you with the SAM registration. We can help you with certification. Um, we can help you look at solicitations, especially if you're new to government contracting. So um, trust me, it'll be um, something you'll be very happy with doing. Um, I did give you a link for applying for the EIN online. Don't pay to get an EIN. Um, sometimes if you search, get my EIN, there'll be a ton, um, but not the IRS site. So make sure you only go to the irs.gov site to get your EIN. Um, everyone else is gonna charge you and you can do it for free. Um, there's a link for the, uh, the NAICS code so you can go um, find your business, um, your industry codes, um, if you're a service or um, if you offer products um, you can use those. Um, if you want help from the uh, PTAC counselor, we can do that too. And then products and service codes, it just kind of is another um, a code that uses, um, that describes what you um, sell or your service. Um, then I did put a link for the dynamic business search so you can go check that out. Um, it's really good for doing your market research, finding your um, competitors. Um, you can look and see what they have out there. Um, you can see how many competitors are in your area. Um, so it's a really good site. I do plan to do a webinar on it um, probably within the next few months. So if you wanna keep an eye out for that. Um, and then you can do Duns Online free. I just threw it in here. So you don't um, look for Duns Online and someone wants you to pay to get a Duns number. Um, this is the free site, but again, PTAC counselors, we can call and get it in you know, 15 minutes for you um, with no hassle. So um, that's all my information. I know it was uh, um, kind of a fire hose, um, but again, it was just a high level how to navigate through the system, some of the, the issues that you encounter. Um, so um, bottom line is get a PTAC counselor or use the guide to help you through it. Um, with that, I will turn it over to James for his last info and oops, did we go to, okay, we're good. Yeah, so thank you so much, Nancy. Um, and I hope everyone got something out of it. 
Um, I'm going to enter the uh, feedback survey uh, for today's webinar into the chat right now. Um, if, if you guys could click on that and let us know what you thought of today's event, that'd be really great. But it's not quite over. Um, for those of you who want to stay late, we will have a Q&A session. Uh, we're going to start that in just about 45 seconds. Um, but I do want to mention two more uh, webinars that we have coming up. PTAC is always putting out webinars. We've got one on the woman-owned small business certification coming up this Tuesday. So if you just love Nancy and you want to hear her voice more, um, <laughs> join again. She will be hosting again. So thanks. And thanks, I'm, Nancy. A, I, I'm a lot more practiced in that one. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy did step in quite heroically yesterday to, to uh, cover this webinar. So it was really impressive that you put all this together so quickly. Um, and we have another one in late May, on the 27th, County of Santa Clara request for invitation and invitation to bid. So if you're in the Bay Area, you think you might be able to do business with the County of Santa Clara, definitely check that one out as well. All right, we've got some questions. Let's get to them. Um, okay. Dave, David Fuller is asking, I had heard, um, I think, on a previous PTAC webinar that the DUNS number was yeah. being replaced. Any news on that? Yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to go to... Um, it's called an EIN number. It's going to be um, um, issued by the government. Um, the last I heard, and this was just a few weeks ago, that it's not coming out till 2022. Um, so in the meantime, we're still using Dunn's numbers. Um, so um, if you do have a Dunn's number and we go to EI, uh, the EIN number, they're supposed to automatically give you an EIN. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Um, in 2022 or later <laughs> or always or later <laughs> or later yeah <laughs> you can attend that to yeah. most sentences yeah or, or, it, or it depends <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah nehal gajar sorry if i'm not pronouncing that correctly um if you change your llc to a c corp how does the sam registration page uh cage code sorry registration cage code in dod sbir grants that you have applied Okay. Uh, affected. How are they affected in terms of so, the system time? Yeah, if you change from an LLC to a, to a C to a C corp. Um, sorry about the clock. So sorry. Um, you will have to uh, get with Duns. Um, they will verify that you've changed your business status um, under the same Duns number. You don't have to change Duns number. You'll just change the status. Um, then you will go into SAM and change that you are now a corporation. Um, and submit that, it'll go through um, all the validation. And then for the SBIR, you'll, you'll probably just need to let them know um, that you've changed organization. I don't know what effect that will have on your grant personally, so. Thank you, Nancy. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like we've got that one answered. Okay. I see Williams is saying, I completed SAMS and was approved. However, I do not recall completing the SBA supplemental page. Um, step be accessed when already approved in SAM. Yeah. Um, you can actually go back into SAM and uh, make the changes and go all the way to that SBA page and change it. Or um, there is an easier way to do it. I was going to do it in my um, webinar. Um, I don't know. I see if. Um, they have my email address, James. Or um, they, they are answer. welcome to email me at info at and okay. I will you um, Because that's too much to um, discuss here, but I can send you the instructions for um, getting a global uh, or a general login system with SBA that you can then subscribe to ProNet and then you can make your changes. So, but it's a long drawn out that I don't want to. We only have a few minutes left, so um, just email James and he can send it to me. Um, and again, uh, Mitchell, this is the same thing. Yes, you can go back in Sam and edit the SBA. Um, or if you want to send James um, an email, I can send you the info on the general login system and ProNet. Um, so you don't have to go back into Sam and, and, and mess things up in there. Uh, I can't find a newer one, do you? I do not, Lark. Um, oh, I'm sorry, James. You want to read that? <laughs> James? 
Oh, sorry. You can, oh. I, I didn't realize I was muted. Um, oh, <laughs> okay. Mark is asking, um, the current SF330 has an expiration date of January 31st, 2021, but I can't find a newer one. Do you know what's happening with this? Okay, Mitchell. Uh, um, I do not. Have you, um, I guess, have you gone back into SAM and, and tried um, renewing? Um, it should have the current one in there. Um, and yeah, Mark, if you want to email James as well, I can look that up and then uh, James will give his email. And Lark mentioned that they that they were a PTAC client. I'm not sure if if uh, oh, yeah. to yeah. that NorCal PTAC um, or or another PTAC, but okay. if you're if you're a PTAC client, reach out to your or reach out to me or your counselor. Yeah. Uh, I got a question about my email. You, you can yeah. see it on the page right now. That's my phone number and my email. Um, so go ahead and reach out to me. Yeah. Um, with any of the questions you feel like weren't answered today or any other comment or question about PTAC and about what we can offer. Um, and like we've mentioned, if you want a session with Nancy, please sign up on our webpage. You do have to be in our service area. You have to be in business with a mm -hmm. for-profit business. And by in business, we mean you have a couple quarter of quarters of sales under your belt and you're really ready for to get in the con contracting marketplace. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty yeah. much it. If you'd be interested in government contracting, not looking for grants or something like that. And it doesn't cost anything like we've mentioned. Um, so thank you. That is all the time we have today. Thanks for everyone's thank participation. Uh, I did put a survey in the chat. And also when I end the webinar, everyone will be redirected towards a page with a, uh, a link to our survey. If you could just fill that out and let us know how we did. We're yeah, always trying yeah. to improve our services. Yeah, I appreciate your feedback. It helps me improve. Definitely. Um, and it means a lot to our funder as well. So that's a nice thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, we hope to see you guys at future webinars. And uh, just one more reminder that we will be sending out the video recording and the slides later today. And all these hyperlinks, including the video and contact information uh, will be included there as well. Okay. All right. Thanks, thanks so everyone. much. Thanks, Nancy. And thanks, everyone. Uh, bye. Enjoy the rest of your day.